the Seattle Supersonics in his first NBA All-Star game, six foot four inch guard Dennis Johnson. Dennis's teammate, forward center from Seattle, 6'11", Jack Sigma. An all-star who has never missed a game in his collegiate and pro career from the Chicago Bulls, 7'2", Artis Gilmore. Also in his first all-star game, a second-year pro from the Kansas City Kings, 6'4", Otis Birdsong. starters from the Milwaukee Bucks in his first NBA All-Star game, 6'7", Marcus Johnson. Teaming with Marcus up front in his third NBA All-Star game from the Denver Nuggets, George McGinnis. And making his ninth All-Star appearance from the Los Angeles Lakers, 7'2", Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The Skywalker from the Denver Nuggets, his third NBA star game, 6'4", David Thompson. The other starting guard from the Phoenix Suns, his third star game, 6'4", Paul Westfall. The trainer for the Western Conference All-Stars, Bill Jones of Kansas City. The assistant coach from the Seattle Supersonics, Les Habegger and the head coach, a man who in 1971 was the most valuable player in this All-Star game from the Seattle Supersonics, Lenny Wilkins. Now the Eastern Conference stars, the big man who has been the heart and soul of the Detroit Pistons for so long. Seven times an NBA All-Star, Bob Lanier. a man who has never missed an all-star game in his 11-year NBA career for the Washington Bullets, the Big E, Elvin Hayes. Elvin's teammate in his fourth all-star game, also the Washington Bullets, here's Bobby Dandridge. Here is an all-star who has come home. He played his high school ball less than two miles away at Pontiac Central from the Cleveland Cavaliers, 6'8", Campy Russell. In his second NBA all-star game from the San Antonio Spurs, 6'9", Larry Keenan. Here is the most amazing little man to ever play this game. The smallest man ever to make an NBA All-Star squad. We've overlooked him too long. From the Houston Rockets, Calvin Murphy. The starters for the Eastern Conference in his third game for the Philadelphia 76ers, the Dr. Julius Irving. Another player who has come home from the Houston Rockets, his fifth NBA All-Star game, Rudy Tomjanovich. The starting center, only 23 and still growing, 6'10 from Houston, Moses Malone. And here's the man who received the most votes from the fans of this all-star ballot. From Detroit and now San Antonio, George Gervin. The other starting guard for the Eastern Conference in his fifth NBA all-star game for the New Orleans Jazz, Pistol Pete Maravich. The trainer is from Detroit, Mike Abdenauer for the Eastern Conference. Now, the coaching staff for the East, the assistant coach of the Washington Bullets, Bernie Bickerstaff. 
And the head coach, the man who last year guided the Washington Bullets to the World Championship, Dick Mata. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Three players, John, who have come home, grew up in this area, 20 miles apart. Reem Abdul-Jabbar and Moses Malone will jump it up. Reem has played extremely well against Moses and Houston. In competition between the Rockets and the Lakers. George Gervin will take the first shot. George Gervin is not going to have the problem he had in past All-Star games. He's home. He's looking at the hoop. He's going to get off to a gunning start. Westfall with the left hand. He'll shoot it up with either hand. The East on the board and the first turnover. And generally speaking, we have a lot of turnovers early in this game because the players are not accustomed to working with one another. They're not familiar with their cuts. David Thompson now of Denver brings it up. His teammate George McGinnis goes to Westfall. Westfall slides around the screen. Picked up by Malone and out to Kareem. Cross court McGinnis. Tom Janovich. And the East comes across with Pete Maravich in that heavy knee brace, which has burdened him this year, coming back from surgery. The doctor... <laughs> Thompson in the middle. Dishes to Marcus Johnson of Milwaukee. On the miss. Out of bounds. It'll go over to the East. George Gervin. Brent, one of the things that the players are concerned with out here, they have so much respect for each other that sometimes they overpass. Out of bounds, Kareem had touched on the end line there, so the East will keep possession. And I was just reminded that the last time Thompson played in this city, he lit it up with 73 points. That was down at Kobo. He set those nets on fire down there at Kobo. Of course, he's been playing great basketball lately, so we might see another good shooting performance from him. The pistol. Way off. And on the air ball, rebounded by Malone, and Irving had it knocked away as he drove to the glass. That ball that time was knocked out of Irving's hand. Jabbar knocked out of bounds. He's looking for some help from the official. They don't give it to him, and the West brings the ball up. Taps into Westfall on the left, and here's McGinnis. They front Kareem with Rudy T, and now Rudy follows George, and here's Thompson. David Thompson. Strong Texas flavor to this Eastern team as Maravich of New Orleans makes it one of two for him. Abdul Jabbar checks in as he holds off Moses. Rudy T made the defensive play, but the West keeps possession and Johnson. Marcus Johnson from West The amazing ball. thing about both these basketball teams is early they're running a lot of set stuff. They seem to be setting up more than they're trying to run. Normally in all-star games, you get the breaking opportunities. And here we have a break right now with George, George McGinnis, McGinnis on the steal. Maravich brings it up for the East. Turnovers now, three against the East and none against the West. Maravich. Westfall spins inside. Now the East comes up. Maravich. Ah, tricky move off the curve. Marcus Johnson's outlet, Westfall is all alone. He'll have the easy layup oh, at the other end. So it's 8-6, Westfall West for the East. That time in the East, they were caught in a situation where they didn't have any four balance. A good play by Marcus Johnson, looking up immediately upon receiving the rebound. So the East will have the ball out of bounds. They trail here by a field goal, first period. 29th annual NBA All-Star Game. The foul call as Julius Irving put up the shot. Irving finally getting that basketball down and deep. He said last night he's got his eyes on being the MVP also. 
He's not gotten off to a good start in past All-Star games. Struggled the first time in Milwaukee. He had a great game, a lot of spectacular stuff. Today, we may see some of the same. And here he is, the doctor from Philadelphia, the man who's been carrying the 76ers for the last month. He, of course, now is all alone on that team with McGinnis out in Denver. They've added Bobby Jones up front. Doug Collins, of course, would be here today, but he is injured. So Irving hits the free throw. We're 8-7. We're 8.34 to go first period. Thompson now brings it down for the West. There are the dark road uniforms. As Westfall gets free on a beautiful move, came to the glass, goaltending the call score. Goaltending violation. Real good move by Paul Westfall, Westfall that time. George McGinnis. Here he goes on a backdoor cut. George Gervin in there to goaltend the call. Good play, playing without the ball. At the other end, it was over the head by Maravich, and Moses Malone came up with the field goal. So the pistol and Malone go to work right here. You'll see it again. Oh, you see Pete come in, a little razzmatazz. He brings it right behind his head, and Malone, always active inside, takes it right up, puts the cap on it, gets fouled, doesn't get the three-point play. Now Westfall comes up. Here's the doctor. Gets free of one man to the left hand. Kareem to Westfall, and here's Thompson. David Thompson from Westfall. The West has so many guys back on that that they just really don't know what to do. Thompson has Marcus Johnson ahead. He pulls it right on the top. McGinnis, the man in the middle, was tripped up as he came across. Julius accidentally tripping him. Julius Helps Irving. George up. That's his first. First personal against first. Julius and the first team foul on the East. Again, the East is not having the floor balance that they need, and the West has taken advantage of it two or three times today. So the Eastern Conference stars come up led by Maravich. Janovich hits the pistol. Top of the circle. It's a one-point West lead as they come down. Well, John, that leg doesn't look too bad to me. Maravich, he might have a good shot at MVP also. I talked to him before the game, and he says it's weak, and he wants to get rid of that brace at the end of the season, that, but he has to wear it this year. Gervin goes to the left, and Irving lost control of the ball on the turnover, and Westfall from behind the back. To the attack. The whistle had sounded Actually, chance for the three-pointer as he threw the foul. Paul oh, Westfall has stood out in each of the last two All-Star games. Well, Westfall is a great offensive player, and it's cold outside, and he's beginning to heat it up in here. You'll see he comes right in. The lane opens up right there. He just takes it to the hoop, doing what he does best. Speaking of heating up, that roar was for that man, number 16. Bob Lanier, he's in his seventh NBA All-Star game, and he was added to the team by Commissioner Larry O'Brien because of the injuries suffered by Doug Collins. We have his injury right there. He's got some problems with his eye. He may not get rolling yet. We also have Calvin Murphy in the game at this point, and I know that Calvin is excited to play in this one, so let's give him a look early. Six points for Westfall already. 15-11 on the strength of that free throw. Merovich with six, leading the East. And here's the little man, Calvin. Dally for the rebound. East touched it last. It'll go now to the West. And we've got our first timeout here in Pontiac. So the largest crowd to ever see an NBA All-Star game is on hand here at the Silver Dome. It's in excess of 30,000. We'll be right back with the West leading 15-11. Couldn't be with us today, but the mascot from San Diego, the chicken, is here, and the crowd loves him. He's all world for sure. <laughs> he is that. Offered $100,000 to jump. He stayed there in San Diego, turned down Ted Turner's six figures. He's probably making just as much down there. Saw Gene Shue last night, speaking of that city, and they're doing fine, aren't they? They pulled ahead of Portland out there in the Pacific. Kareem with his first hook shot. Kareem Abdul-Jamar from David Thompson. So far, Westfall and Merovich have been the hot shooters in this game. The East and White, here's Calvin Murphy to Lanier. George Gervin still there, Rudy Tomjanovich, and the Doctor. Quick pass to Calvin. Gets open. Well, he may 
intriguing thing, John, about the, the both teams is the fact that they worked the play so well early in the ball game. That time he set up very nicely behind the pick and took that open jumper. Dennis Johnson of the Supersonics on the floor as Marcus Johnson missed that shot. Scooped up by Thompson to the glass. Basket is good by and Thompson. And the basket counts and he was fouled. So here will come David. Six. Bob number 16, Bob Lanier. That's well, it's tough first, when you got a match truck as big as Bob Lanier's. You try and get that thing set right there. David Thompson comes the right over the top. Lanier is in there too David late. Thompson, Thompson gets a chance at a couple of free throws. Bob Lanier acting a little bit on that too. <laughs> Six points for Thompson. Murphy to Gervin. Slides the baseline. The doctor wants to crash inside. It was slammed by Kareem. This is the doctor's kind of showcase. Not too many plays. Let's just go wide open. Like well, on the when he can asteroid. get in a one-on-one -on -one situation, wide open, spread floor, he can really put on a spectacular show. The problem so far today, he has not taken the ball with him. He's gone in the air, but no ball. Maurice Lucas of the Trailblazers checking in for the West. So many times in the game like this, the players really try to get to the basket a little too often. They pass up the outside shots, and I think if they start hitting a few of those, it'll open it up for Julius and people with that ability to give a good one-on-one -on -one show. And Walter Davis, last year's Rook of the Year from Phoenix, now on the floor for the West. Dick Mata and Lenny Wilkins go to their benches, and what benches they are. Thompson comes out, then it's Johnson, Lucas is gone to the floor, now he's back up. Kareem inside to Thompson, and he is stuffed but foul. Elvin Hayes and Julius foul Irving, and the foul is Julius against Irving. the doctor. That's his second, the team's fourth. Well, this is the only midget that hangs around underneath the basket right here, Thompson on shots. Pogo sticks right there, he tries to take it up over Irving and Elvin Hayes, he gets it batted back, but he also gets the free throws. Underneath, the West is not scoring. McGinnis with a couple, Marcus with a couple, and Jabbar with a couple. So only three field goals out of that talented front line right now. The East doing very well inside on defense as they did that time. Lanier forcing the ball back outside. Brett, there are so many offensive stars in the game that when you get in a situation like this, you'll find that they also really start to play defense. David because they Thompson. don't want to be embarrassed at the other end. It's 22 to 15 as the West opens it up. Murphy goes diving for the ball, and as he lost it, he was tied up by Dennis Johnson. Now, Murphy's still got a little excitement in him. He's still so happy to be here. He's not gotten himself under control. He's flying all over the court. He's got the one basket, but he's not really been able to get himself under control. We'll see what happens. He's going to get the skyjack here and Dennis Johnson. Speaking of skyjacks, here's the big band from Chicago. Artis Gilmore checks in, and Kareem will take a break. One by Dennis who tapped it off to Gilmore. So the West will come down now with Dennis Johnson, David Thompson, Artis Gilmore, Davis, and Lucas, who just had the ball knocked away by the big E, Elvin Hayes. Hayes has never missed one of these all-star games in his career. Houston, Washington, San Diego. Davis spins in and out. Goes back now to pick up on defense. Here's Murphy. The doctor. The East would be best at trying to run, get down in a spread floor situ with situation. The West seems to be much better at setting up and getting the outside. Maurice Lucas, the ball. Davis. Hayes comes back down on Maurice, who just scored on him. So Lucas and Hayes trade field goals. Lucas has it knocked away. Gilmore with a hand on it. Lucas. Knock free again. Calvin Murphy down the foot race. It's three on two under his legs. The doctor not ready for it. Calvin got a little excited that time and <laughs> ended up making a bad pass, but I'm sure that he wants to make up for that one somewhere along the line. Doctor is just saying to Calvin right now, he's saying, Calvin, Henry Bibby didn't hit me with one of those last week. I wasn't ready for it. You see, Calvin has the ball right in the middle, and they got an excellent break. He sees Julius serving on the wing, but he doesn't give it up to him. 
your, your response to the board. He's going to have to go to the board. Okay. If, you, no, if you make it. That's the. That was Dick Mata talking to Calvin Murphy about Number hitting the board. Three, Jack Sigma replaces Artis Gilmore in the West lineup. Artis Gilmore has come out of the game because he gets hit right here. He got a finger in the eye. He's going to be looked at. They're over at the bench right now attending to him. So Jack Sigma of Seattle will work against Lanier in the pivot. Bill Jones over there attending to Artis, the doctor alongside him. Lucas gets Hayes up in the air and drew the foul. There's foul Artis number 11, Elvin to. Hayes. That's his first. Is that a bloody situation. nose, I believe? Yes, it is. Maurice Lucas at the line, three to make two. Team fouls. The East now over the limit with five. The West with three. Brent, the... West should have really come out in business suits. I mean, they have been very businesslike about this game all evening, last night, today. Ever since they've been selected here, they've been very businesslike about their approach. Bobby Dandridge out there with Bob Lanier, Julia Servin, Elvin Hayes, and Calvin Murphy for the East. It's a five-point lead by the West. Great pass by Davis to Dennis Johnson. Knocked free. Murphy to the attack. Here's the doctor. Calvin got it back that time. A beautiful three-on-two fast break. He hit Julius with a pass he could handle. Dennis Johnson. Dennis Johnson. Again, you see Murphy in the middle and Irving on the wing. This time they capitalize. He gets it down. Thompson travels. Rattling. Otis Birdsong of Kansas City Rattling. reports in for Lenny Wilkins and the West, and the West elects to call a timeout right now for turnovers, seven against the East and only three against the West, and that's been a difference. It shows on the scoreboard with the West up by five. It's so wonderful to make a child's This man played in 12 All-Star games. This man played in 12 All-Star games. Most valuable player three times. Oscar Robertson, the big O. You must really get up for this game. Oh, it's a great classic when I played. I enjoyed it. Basketball was my life then. How about now? What you doing? Well, I'm in a construction business, but I'm here doing a job for the Pepsi Hot Shots. It's the closest I ever got to you since I guarded you. No, you got closer than that a few times, Rod. Believe me. <laughs> All right, Oscar. Let's go back to Brenda Boys. More basketball. <laughs> Oscar was fouled on every shot, and Hot Rod knows it, and so do the officials. Oscar looks great. He's put on a little bit of weight, likes to play some tennis. He's got a daughter who's 5'10", becoming a marvelous athlete herself. All right, back here in the white right now, Eastern Conference All-Stars. Julius outside. Off fire down off Elvin Hayes' hands. And hold on, says Madden. we got a loose ball foul underneath. Elvin Hayes got real good inside position that time. Maurice Lucas tried to take it away from him, getting called for the foul. He wanted to know how he could jump with all that weight on his back. It's a five-point Western Conference lead right now. The East with possession. Pete Maravich going to check in soon. Hayes up high with the bounce, but didn't go down. Sickman's off. Davis to the attack. He's lightning quick, and he can come through, I'll tell you. Fine offensive forward who moves so well without the ball. There he is, popping out to get it now. Looking for an open man. Here's Birdsong. Goes back to Walter Davis. Three seconds on the shot clock. Lanier. Two minutes, two minutes left. Calvin Murphy down the right side, slides inside, throws up. Elvin Hayes missed it on the out. Walter Davis off to Birdsong, who is hustling on the left, and Dennis Johnson taps it in. Oh, that's what that Dennis great Johnson. will do for you. Walter Davis just flew past Bobby Dandridge and got it down, got him a quick opportunity, and they followed up. On the turnover, it's Birdsong. Lucas slows to regain control, hits Davis. Neither team is shooting particularly well here the last couple of minutes. Dandridge. Right, I, thought, I thought Dick Mata told Murphy to release and come back. What's he doing underneath the board? 
Minute 10 left in the first period here at the Silver Dome. Lucas gets Hayes up in the air again, and Elvin looked a bit lost there, and so Lucas threw up the shot. Davis. Walter Davis. Dennis Johnson going with the doctor and a little too closely fouled him. One of the things in playing against Julius Irving so many times, you never wanted to give him that baseline because once he gets toward the hoop in that position, he's almost impossible to stop. You try and get him into a situation where you can get some help because he can't be guarded one-on-one. -on -one. Embarrass you one-on-one. -on -one. Here's the penalty coming up, 32-26, and the doctor with that last free throw. There's the pistol back. Sekmas, the man down in the hole. Artis Gilmore's bloody nose not serious. I'm sure he'll be back. Sekma. Plays facing the basket very well. That's where he plays best when he can look at the hoop and get that little jump shot off. Does an excellent job of keeping opposition off balance because he puts the ball behind his head. One of the reasons he's so effective in doing that, he keeps his shoulder square to the basket, which gives him a good chance to shoot the ball directly at it rather than at an angle. Maravich bringing down the clock and he gives it up on the turnover. Here's Birdsong. Inside. Oh, that's Birdsong. Last pitch. second, that'll end the first period. So Otis Birdsong takes advantage of the turnover by Maravich at the end of the first period. 36 to 27. The West has opened up a lead. As you see Otis go to the hole. That is bringing more and more conventions into this area. For example, in 1980, the Republicans will hold their national convention here in this city. Dennis Johnson throws it back to Maurice Lucas. The Western Conference All-Stars are in the blue jerseys, the East in the white. And it's Bobby Dandridge bringing it up now. The Washington Bullets, this is his fourth NBA All-Star game. He was a fourth-round draft choice. Campy Russell in for the first time. Hayes fouled as he threw up the shot. Maurice Lucas. East has a very tall team, and Captain Russell playing in the backcourt along with Maravich. That gives them Lanier, Hayes, and Bobby Dandridge up front. They got a lot of height, pretty good quickness and mobility. Again, they've had more success trying to run than setting up. So here's the man earlier this year became the 10th player in NBA history to surpass 20,000 regular season points. He led this league in scoring as a rookie when he played for the San Diego Rockets. Played four years for the Rockets. The last one, of course, being in Houston before being traded to the Bullets for Jack Merrin. And last year, he finally got his wish, an NBA championship. The West coming down now. Second year pro also out of Houston, Otis Birdsong. Now with Kansas City teaming with Phil Ford. Dennis Johnson to Artis Gilmore. Big fella from Chicago is back after sustaining that bloody nose. Birdsong tightened up by Lanier who come out on defense. Back into the corner now, Dennis Johnson outside. And Otis Birdsong with an offensive rebound. Good fake by Maurice. Moves inside for the field goal. Maurice Lucas. 38 to 29. The West now with 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Lanier will take it up outside. He's an outstanding shooter for a big man. 6'11. Now it's Walter Davis from North Carolina trying to find daylight on the baseline, and he was blocked off there by Dandridge. Power on number 10, Bob Dandridge. That's his first, the team's first. Walter Davis trying to use that quickness, and he gets by Bobby Dandridge to get that block call. Otis Birdsong has the ball out in front. 
Quick pass to Dennis Johnson, and goaltending scores. And there was up. That's a fine pass by Davis. That's his second good pass. Well, they've run great offensive set stuff. I mean, it's amazing. They've only been in here a day and been together, and they've run these patterns like they've been together for three or four months. Hampy Russell played his high school basketball less than two miles away. Pass back by Maravich, and here's Lanier again. Two quick field goals by Big Five. Great play by Maravich. He's one of the people in the league that probably sees the floor as well as anyone picking out Bob Lanier being wide open. Foul called by Vanek. Here we have Pete going toward the hoop, and he can see he's picked up by Gilmore. He knows that Bob Lanier is open. With a good fake, he goes into the hoop. Two points. That's a sweet wraparound pass right there. Not many guys can make that pass. The foul was on Hayes and Larry Keenan. San Antonio Spurs, number 35. He was not a bit at all bashful <laughs> down in Atlanta last year. He threw a shot up for every minute he was on the floor. Walter, Walter Davis. Davis looking smooth, hitting the passes, and now he's starting to warm it up as a shooter, too. Keenan gives it off to Maravich. Maravich with a brace on his right knee. Comes free. He's turned it over again. Maravich having trouble handling the ball. Westfall wants the foul. And Hayes Westfall. wisely lets him have the field goal. Back quickly now to Campy Russell of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Keenan's on his right side. Campy will take it outside himself. Run down by Artis Gilmore who gives it up. And here's the man doing it all for the West right now. Walter Davis of Phoenix. Pull up, jump shot. Artis Gilmore with an offensive rebound. Can't Artis stop Gilmore. Artis right there. Just score it when he gets the ball in that spot. 46 to 33. The West has opened up some daylight now in this game. Keenan. Down comes the West again. Westfall goes back to McGinnis and Big George. In straight block by Hayes, who awaited and anticipated McGinnis perfectly. Well, West has just done a better job of limiting George the East Irvin to just one shot. Ball. They've come down Florida a free land, put the ball up from the outside, and West has gotten the ball off the board, got breaking opportunities, got it down. When they had to set up, they set up, and they scored. They got a 13-point lead. Marcus Johnson of Milwaukee is sent back in by Lenny Wilkins. Hayes was also taken out for the East from Birdsong. Birdsong so much more effective for Cotton Fitzsimmons this year now that he's able to be the shooting guard and Phil Ford of course running the Kings attack Maravich to the glass that's a pretty play when you're that far away from the basket and they're only taking one dribble to go that distance you know that he's doing it real well Gervin with a great block here on Westfall went to the left hand Back to Pete on this one-on-one -on -one move. One dribble from 18 feet away into the hoop. Good body control for the layup. Birdsong again. Otis Birdsong from West Ball. Now on the floor for the East, we've got Gervin and Maravich. Keenan handling the ball. Campy Russell. And we've also got Moses Malone back on the floor. Russell. High off the glass. Good shot. He worked on that shot all day yesterday with Calvin Murphy. He lost all the horse games, but he's warmed up today. It's a very difficult shot to block. He takes it back over his head, and it's tough to get to. Got a timeout? West retains it, and I think you can hear Vanek yelling that we've got a timeout out here. And when you come back, Calvin Murphy of the Houston Rockets will be on the floor for the East, and they've fallen behind 50-37 to 37 in the second period. The Silver Dome. And the Western Conference All-Stars, led by Paul Westfall with nine points and four assists, has opened up a 50-37 lead with 8.34 to go in the first half. The West has hit 7-12 this period, 19-42 for the game. Westfall. Taken down by Malone. He took a couple of steps, then this out was Keenan off the go. Run down by Marcus Johnson. Problem for the East, they can't decide what spectacular play they're going to make. Consequently, they're missing the easy hoop. Artis Gilmore. Artis Gilmore from McGinnis. So I gave Malone credit for a rebound. That should have gone to San Antonio's Larry Keenan, who came out of there quickly on the fly. Russell now going to Moses Malone. Inside, through the foul from Gilmore and goes to the floor. Definitely will go to the floor when you're knocked down by a big strong left arm like that. He got him up in the air, got him to take that little elevator trip, and you'll see that arm comes right across. Malone inside, deep, a good pump fake. Watch this left arm. End result, broken back. <laughs> Not that serious, Steven. Come on. This is going to be one of the outstanding players in the league. He's only uh, 
in his fourth year, but he's also an individual that would have been coming out of college or been a rookie this year, so he has a long way to go, and he's doing very well in the league. And you can tell that he's starting to fill out in the upper body. 15 oh, pounds over the last summer. Gilmore, as the shot clock goes down inside 10, and the West has turned it over. So the East now trying to come back with Gervin Murphy, Russell Malone, and Keenan. They trail at 52 to 39 and 7.30 to go in the first half. Here's Keenan. The East is going to get back into the basketball game when they decide to slow down, get themselves under control, take advantage of the miscues and the turnovers. There will be plenty of them, and they've got a lot of offensive firepower. Speaking of taking advantage of turnovers, they've got a chance right here to convert after Artis Gilmore's traveling violation. Durbin gets free of Birdsong coming to the glass. George fouled as he assaulted the hoop that time. We have a real good pass coming up the defender Birdsong. Loses his man momentarily. Gervin going into the basket. Body control. He tried to get a little too much English on him. Ended up being fouled. Did not get the three-point play. Thompson returns and Birdsong out. And here is George Gervin, who won the NBA scoring title, responding to Thompson's 73-point production that final Sunday with 63 points. Not a bad day. The only reason he couldn't get 70, he just got tired. Six foot seven inch guard. Gervin goes down on defense, matched against David Thompson. Westfall hit in the face by Calvin Murphy. It was accidental, and Calvin knew it right away. So we're going to have a timeout called by Dick Potter and the Eastern Conference All Stars. The West, in their dark blue, leads it 54 to 43. Six minutes and 59 seconds to go right now in the first half. Olympic medalist Susie Koroff. From extra Larry O'Brien of the NBA. And I understand, Larry, that there's going to be expansion in the future for the NBA. Yes, there's been a lot of interest expressed around the country from a number of cities, Hot Rod. And we're going to be taking a look at these applications of these cities. We'll go to no more than two-team expansion by no later than 80-81 season. I want to thank you for that seat you gave me. No, I saw you up there. Didn't you just notice I was calling you? You're going to have my seat right after this interview, Howard. Right. I'll go back up there because you're entitled. You've been in this game before. Thank you. We'll be talking to you after the game with the most valuable player award. Now back to Brent and the guys. Uh, Why didn't the commissioner ask him if he ever passed the ball in this game? That's what I want to know. <laughs> ever in life. <laughs> in one game, I think he shot 15 times in 14 minutes. Is that right? Here's Paul Westfall. He got a leg up now if you want to think about the MVP award in this competition. He's been pursuing it for each of the last couple of years. Here's Calvin, 23. He's always got that leg up, but never gotten it down. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is right now. Gives it up to Thompson on the right wing, and David comes in with a great move. Yanked the ball free at the last second, and it's showtime for the Western Conference. 56 points already, and the frustrated East trying to dig in. Well, that's Calvin Murphy coming back at you. He just feels like they're doing a little too much. Watch Thompson, a little show and tell way up in the air and just glides in. It's nice if you can jump that high. Gilmore looking for an open man. Shot clock inside of 10. George McGinnis. George McGinnis. So that's 58 points with still six minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half in this all-star game. And if you like shooting, you're going to love the rest of this one. Here they come again. Westfall. Again, Paul Westfall, Westfall trying to draw the foul as he came to the glass. And he almost lost control that time. Well, the West has just had great defense, taking advantage of all the loose balls and turnovers and great offense that they're in. 13 points, Steve, for Westfall already in this competition. The East has turned it over. They are completely frustrated right now. They're giving up a lot of cheap baskets. That must be about the fifth fast break. No one person just going to the hoop with no defender back. They have to get much better floor balance to get back into the game. <laughs> Hot Rod Hundley has found his next guest. <laughs> All right, David Thompson now bringing it up. Here they come. They have been awesome so far. The Western Conference All-Stars in blue. Big Georgia Denver. Westfall inside to the Gilmore. 
the rules in that Curtis shot. Gilmore. They're unstoppable right now. Gervin picked up by Thompson. Calvin Murphy lets the doctor have it inside. Doctor dishing it off, went out of bounds, and the East will keep possession as Kareem Abdul Jabbar checks in. And I believe Bob Lanier will soon be in also. Yes, here he is from the Eastern Conference Stars. You can see him there in the background. The thing that the East must do now is just put the ball in the air. They have tried to make the big spectacular passes. In some cases, they've been successful, but they haven't gotten the ball in the air enough to really get a chance to score. Doctor quickly hits one. They've scored 47. The West up with 62 and five minutes to go in the first half. Tom Janovich will soon check back in for Dick Mata, too. Thompson and Westfall in the backcourt. McGinnis, Kareem, and Marcus Johnson back. Give and go to McGinnis. Went to the left hand. Tapped it back in on the other George side. McGinnis. George McGinnis had the flu yesterday, and he certainly doesn't show it today. <laughs> Worked on his offensive rebounding that time. Got a great pass from Jabbar inside. Happy Russell to Lanier. Lanier giving it up, and they lose it on the turnover. It'll go to the West. Well, he begged for this one. Please let me have it. You'll see the cutter comes in. McGinnis makes a great move right there to get himself right and up at the hoop. He can't get it down the first time, but second time he does. McGinnis has fouled out of 14 games with Denver this season, and that team is 1-13 and 13 in those 14 games. Demonstrates his value as he puts it down, and he was fouled that time. So George McGinnis. Formerly of Indiana, and then with the Philadelphia 76ers, and he has scored 386 points from the foul line, so that ranks him second this year in the NBA, and here's the big horse. He's been to the free throw line more than anyone else in the NBA this year. He's averaging about 11 free throws a game. The thing is, most of the time, he's against a person who's much slower, and he takes advantage of his quickness. He's 6'8", but he plays like a guy who's 6'3 or 4". Demonstrating that one-handed form, that is 66 points for the Western Conference All-Stars with 4.20 to go. George Gervin rolling one up and in, and you can hear the whistle. There was also a foul on it. So magnificent George Gervin, who certainly is one hot hand who could help bring the Eastern Conference back into this game if he can erupt. That high arching shot. Six foot seven inch guard. The way they'll be successful in getting back in this game is to try to get the ball off the board and run. If they can play some pretty good defense that they're in, they'll get a chance to get some breaks and get some hoops. And the men who are on top and very much in command go to work again. McGinnis giving it up. Westfall gets position on Murphy. McGinnis again. Missing this time underneath. Marcus Johnson coming back up, and there was a foul underneath. Foul on number 16, Bob Lanier. Well, John, we That's know why these guys came to play situation. right here. That's right. The Jack winner's Sigmar going to get $1,000. The loser's going to get six fifty. And believe me, the West is going at it right now. This may be the best, the best two-way player in the game, Marcus Johnson. I think that in his second year, he's developed the outside shot that has really opened Marcus up his Johnson game. It's no telling what he's going to do. He plays both ends of the floor as well as anyone. They're playing like pool boys. <laughs> Jack Sigma, number 43, has returned for the West. Coach Lenny Wilkins. You would think with the coaching matchups that the two men who guided teams to the championship last year would get the nod. Not so. Dick Mott and Lenny Wilkins had the best records in their respective conferences in mid-January. On the turnover and the steal, it's Thompson. We have an interesting situation here. Dick Mott has gone to Julius Irving and George Gervin in the backcourt thinking that they may be able to post some of the smaller guards on the opposite end of the floor. If they could keep the ball at this end of the court, they may have a shot at it. And it finally goes down. Here is that play again on the stuff. David Skywalker just soaring to the glass for the Western Conference. They have scored 70 points now in the first half. Abdul Jabbar turns around at the baseline. And Marcus Johnson gives the West a second chance. Bob Lanier. Gervin in the middle. Makes once and comes up and in. 
Well, that's what they have to do. They have to put the ball in the air. They ought to get down quickly and set up. They're not too good at running their patterns and their set offense, so if they can get down and get the quick shot, they got a chance. Irvin now with nine points, seven here in the second period. He has warmed up. Okay. A oh, West Ball. Johnson turns around on Rudy T. Lanier with a hand hunt now by Sigma, who gets it off as he goes to the floor, and it's Thompson inside. Slam back down by Marcus. Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson displaying his jumping ability. 72 points for the Western Conference with 2.20 to go here in the first half. Again, you'll see, they're playing like they're very hungry. The ball goes off the glass, Thompson inside, no box, a good play. And Gervin single-handedly keeping the Eastern Conference in this now. 11 points. Kareem rolls in that sky. Hooks all four points. They got 74 points. They all want some of it. He's begging for the ball down and deep. That's his favorite spot right there. No problem. Irving on the miss. Abdul Jabbar has it taken away as he put it behind his back. The doctor was still there and he picked him clean. Off with a shot, Lanier. That's what the East has to do. They have to get more than one shot at the basket. That time Lanier was able to put in the layup. Whistle as Thompson began the drive. And the Western Conference All-Stars have called a timeout. So the East will go to Dick Mata. The West, meanwhile, will go over and huddle around Lenny Wilkins. 128 to go, and they've scored seven. Paul Westfall of the Western All-Stars. They're up by 16 points, and Paul, you're playing great. Great lead. Well, we're moving the ball well, and we're keeping the court spread, and uh, we're getting a lot of easy shots. They're missing their shots, and we're able to get the, get the rebound and move, beat them down the court. You're not going to let up uh, in that second half, are you? they got a lot of stars. Well, uh, last year we let up, and we paid for it, so uh, we're going to try to beat them by as many as we can. All right, Paul. Paul Westfall, back to you, Brent. Thank you, Hot Rod. With a minute 28 to go, Paul Westfall and the Western Conference All-Stars have scored 74 points. The record for one half was set by the West back in 1962-86. Now give them 75. They've got an outside shot at it. So far in this period, the West has hit 17 of 30, 57 percent. The East has shot better than they did in the opening period, 12 of 21, also 57 percent. And it's this man, George Gervin, who has shot the best for Dick Mata in this period. Partially deflected, out of bounds, it was off Kareem's hand. It'll go to the East. Elvin Hayes will take the ball out of bounds. So with so much firepower, if they relaxed, as Westfall indicated they did the last year in Atlanta, the East could jump right back in this. Here's Tom Janovich. Looks like a hospital ward out there with knee braces, nose guards. And Lanier rolled up a miss, taken down by Abdul Jabbar. David Thompson off to his left, and here's Dennis Johnson from the left corner now. They're 77 inside of a minute. They're not going to make it. Well, they're not spectacular, but they're awfully businesslike. So next, we'll have a report from 24 hours of Daytona. Ken Squire down there covering for CBS. Durbin runs it down. Tom Janovich is off. West comes down on the tack. Here's Marcus Johnson giving it back to David Thompson. Dennis Johnson. Here's Abdul Jabbar. Five on five. Marcus gives it back. So the two UCLA stars working together, and Kareem with a chance for a three point play. And hey, there's a grand old man of the NBA, Eddie Gottlieb. I'll bet he has seen every All Star game. He's seen every one of those, and he might have seen the start of that pick and roll. Whoever invented it, he might have been right next to them. I think he invented this game, didn't he? I tell you, he puts together the schedule every year, and they've tried to do it this with a computer, the but Eddie Gottlieb is the man who comes up with the right answers every year. So here is Abdul Jabbar at the free throw line. He's got the Los Angeles Lakers poised for a run at the championship. The last 19 seconds here in the first half, but at halftime, besides Daytona, we've got Pepsi Hot Shot competition. We'll check in on the Crosby Clam Bay Golf Tournament and the Trident Award to the player who received the most votes, George Gervin. Put back up by Tom Janovich, still not there. Sigma off of the outlet, and the first half has come to an end. The shootout 
from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. 80 points for the West. They lead the East right now. 80, 58. We'll go to Daytona. Hot shot. Here's the pistol now. Remember, three turnovers. You give it up now to George Gervin. Jump pass inside. Julius to the offhand. Two men in blue, and Kareem controls for McGinnis. Here's now Marcus Johnson on the left. He's smooth, gliding to the glass. There was a whistle as he came in on Gervin. Foul against George. So if you're wondering when was the last time we had 150 points scored by a winning team, well, Steve Jones got out the record book and found it was back in 1962. And Wilt Chamberlain threw in 52 for the losers. It was the West 150, the East 130. And Congratulations to the big guy out in L.A. who I'm sure is watching. He watches everything on the tube in that multi-million dollar home of his. He has been named to Basketball's Hall of Fame. There was no question about that. A great player who's done a great deal for basketball. Just a matter of time. Good, John. He's out there playing volleyball and everything. All right, here's the pistol now to the left. Takes it back from Irving. Westfall checking over his left shoulder for that screen. It's there, but the pass is inside underneath. And the tap-in goes down. So quickly, Dr. East J. hits a couple of field goals, and Kareem is loose. Good heads-up play by Westfall. He saw Kareem sprinting down the floor, beating Lanier. Good fundamental play. And Kareem's not out of his goggles on to take him off. I believe that is the first time I have seen Kareem without his goggles since Westfall almost stole it. Maravich got a deck. And I wonder, Steve, if maybe they're not broken and he doesn't have another pair. Here is Lanier blocked by Abdul Jabbar. Gervin throws it up. Julius Irving. At halftime, Dick Motter told him, like an old coach told me, let's cloud up and rain all over him. And that's what the East is doing. <laughs> that's some old coach you have. I understand that coach. His pass goes inside. There's a foul. Boy, in a strange scene, Kareem, see, without those goggles, as you watch him in underneath, and the Big E, shades of that duel down in the Astrodome, that was the first time that Kareem was ever injured as you watch Irving go back over the head with his stuff. Elvin Hayes accidentally got a finger in Kareem's eye. That was back in college days. And, of course, later he went to the goggles just to protect himself. Marcus Johnson. Here's Gerber. He's now can put a streak together. The doctor. Taken back down by McGinnis now the West. It's three on one. Here's Westfall going back to Marcus Johnson. Blocked by Lanier on defense. And go down in a heap. We're going to have a jump ball. The applause for hustling Lanier. Well, you see that control is so important in basketball. The East had an opportunity to get a break. Julia serving a little bit out of control, forced up a shot, didn't get it. They came back down. Marcus Johnson having a real tough time getting the ball down. He gets it up, but he gets tied up by Bob Lanier. John, where did Hot Rod Hundley go? Is he over there in that chicken costume here in this half? <laughs> Rod's not going to show up in anything. Never know where the Rod's going to be. Started out in the upper balcony here today. Westfall going back to Kareem, who was alone. Ricochets off Maravich, misses it. Hayes control now for the East. 82 to 64. The goggles have shown up, Brent, so he's not going to go the game without them. There they are. Irving, that perhaps he just forgot to put them on when he came out to start the half. As physical as it is sometimes, he may have lost it in a scramble he underneath the boards. Out. Indeed, there he goes. Kareem, so the goggles are tucked back in place, and the Western Conference All-Stars are ready to roll again. It's 82, 66, 9, 28 to go in the third in the NBA All-Star game. A lot of cars are like pizzas. To get a lot on them, you gotta pay a lot extra. But not the 1979 Chevy Chevette. It comes with a lot already on it. Chevette ignores the pizza principle. With it, you get an AM radio, reclining bucket seats, console, white striped tires, and more, all at no extra cost. So avoid the pizza principle. Hi, Richie. Get a car with a lot already on it. Get the best-selling hatchback in America, Chevy Chevette. It's a lot of car for the money. Hi, Richie. Hi, kid. 
seen it, presents a breakthrough. A breakthrough. System 3. System 3. The best zenith ever. The best ever. An advanced picture tube for the sharpest zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. A totally modular chassis. All modular. Designed to be the best performing, the most reliable color TV in zenith history. The most reliable. Zenith. System 3. Zenith. System 3. It's the best zenith ever. Basketball is the all So Pete Maravich has made five in a row, 82-66. And the West down on the attack. Thompson takes Gervin and rotates over to the weak side. Kareem, turn around on Lanier. They go down by Elvin Hayes. They can run to 10 to. Here's Maravich. One at the doctor. On the turnover, it'll be the West right back. Thompson trying to find daylight was fouled as he came inside. George Gervin is home, but he may get a sit on that bench there for a while. That's three straight fouls on him. They have really taken advantage of him defensively right there. Thompson just blows by him. He almost gets a three-point play. He's on the line. So David Thompson in his fourth pro season, third in the NBA, and he has been an member of the Western Conference All-Stars in each of those three years. A starter, as a matter of fact, each time out. 83-66 now. West in command. Maravich with a run of five straight. Cross court on it back to the doctor. Doctor goes down. He was struck in the back. Loose ball foul. He's all right. Loose ball foul by number 30, George McGinnis. They were successful on that play a little earlier, and you'll see it coming up. Julius Irving is going behind a double pick. Maravich throws the ball high, but he gets fouled from behind. Maravich, five of six as he comes up with a miss, and Irving's got it back for the East. Free ball tapped by Lanier on the fly. It's Thompson to West Falls, four on one. Back now to Marcus Johnson. This is where the West has been so effective. They had a four-on-one break that time, and if you give up that many cheap baskets, you're going to be in trouble. It's only the one thing that the West has done, and the East is trying to do that now, is just put more balls in the air. You got a chance if you put it up. You got no chance if you're kicking it around in the stands, letting the chicken play with it. <laughs> chicken will turn it into a football like he did a few <laughs> minutes ago. And here's Marcus Johnson of the Milwaukee Bucks. Eighty five for the Western Conference. Maravich, Gervin, Hayes, Lanier, and Irving on the floor for Dick Mata in the East. Pistol wanted to pass, and Lanier ran down the loose ball. Bob Lanier! Bob Lanier did not expect to be driving baseline in that sequence. He made the most of it. Johnson regains. Batted away from Kareem and out of bounds. Western Conference controls. Vanek, Evans, Madden, the three officials. The East has just done a better job so far playing defense. They've made the West put the ball up more from the outside, limiting their chances to get those cheap, easy breaks. Four on one at the other end, and the field goal layup is missed. Long pass to West ball. Oh, he is outstanding with either hand. I think he goes to that offhand better than anybody in the NBA. He and Bobby Jones are probably the two best in close with either hand. There's Kareem dueling Lanier. Gervin, high arch. Yank down McGinnis. Westfall. Bounce to the corner. McGinnis on the assault. Gives it up. Marcus Johnson. Pretty play that night. Looks like they've worked it together. 89 to 68. McGinnis now with four steals, and Hayes has pounded away for 11 rebounds in this game. Irving against Marcus Johnson. Got it over to Elvin. Run down by McGinnis on the fly. Here comes the West. He went to the offhand. Two Eastern Conference players go tied up. Hayes gets the ball, and McGinnis comes right down on him. And it's going to be a turnover. 
you see him again it's right there he came on the break got the ball there's two eastern players right there with the ball they call elvin hayes and pete maravich for walking and jordan mcginnis did, did a little dive on top to make sure that was a free shot moses malone kareem looking for a teammate rather than the shot and finally gets the marcus David Thompson goes in there with the Giants and with that great leaping ability finds daylight above them. And the doctor on the dribble. Bobby Dandridge. Hayes was hacked by McGinnis coming inside the lane that time on his drive. So we'll have a timeout right now. The foul going against George McGinnis. We've got six minutes and 37 seconds to go. Third period, NBA All-Star game, Pontiac, Michigan. It's 91-68, though. Phyllis George is here with her husband-to-be, John Y. Brown, the owner of the Boston Celtics. They've announced their engagement. Congratulations to both of them. They are to be married in March in New York City. Elvin Hayes, turn around, hit it. Basket is good by Hayes. Follow number 30. Irving and Thompson, 17 points each. Westfall, 15 points and five assists. Our individual leaders so far in this All-Star game. John Havlicek, what if you're the east of the coach team, what, what do you tell these guys? How do they get back into basketball game? Well, one of the things they have to do That's is try and get low for some good percentage shots. They've been in a situation where they forced a lot of shots trying to make the spectacular play. What about that defense? The defense is definitely something they have to improve on. Walter Davis has checked in on the turnover. Hayes with control. Irving batted it free. And it's the doctor. And the doctor is trying hard to yank his conference back into it. The Iceman. With the field goal. Again, they've gone with another tall lineup. They've got Irving and Gervin back into backcourt. Dandridge and Malone and Elvin Hayes up front. If they can get an opportunity to run, they have an excellent chance of getting back into game 540 left. Oh, 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 oh. oh, And the doctor just kind of dropped the hand momentarily, and Paul went to the shot. Paul's played so much horse, he has all kinds of shots out here. Hayes at familiar spot. Moses Malone of Houston fouled as he came back up with the shot. And Dennis Johnson checking back into the game. Number 33, I was talking about familiar spots. Moses Malone down and deep. He's the best Dennis offensive Johnson rebounder in the league, possibly in the history of the NBA. He gets in deep. He's got to be boxed that time. No box. He's on the free throw line. As we look at Paul Westville trying to get comfortable, as he's had a tremendous game so far. Steve, you pointed out his tremendous offensive rebounding. Moses has led the NBA in each of the last two years in that category. Set a league record with 437 a couple of years ago. He has 352 right now, 30 some games left. Again, it slides baseline. Whistle going with the shot going up. Rudy T. Rudy Tom Chanovich. If you're wondering about the face mask and the injury that Rudy suffered last year, it is not a direct result of it. That nose was broken again this year when hit accidentally. But it is such a pleasure to see this man back in basketball. He, of course, missed almost all of last season after an unfortunate incident in Los Angeles. And the Houston Rockets are playing well. Our old buddy Rick Berry now on that Another. team. I'll tell you, it's kind of strange not only to not see John Havlicek out there, not to see Rick Berry, no one from the Celtics, the Knicks, or the Warriors. That's the first time in history that those three teams haven't been represented in an all-star game. So somewhat of a changing of the guard in the NBA. Here's Bobby Dandridge. He's been on four of these teams now. Washington, he puts one up. He came open in the middle. Nice play. Elvin Hayes now playing with those five personals. And that's why Dick Mata wanted to give him a break. Davis gave it off, and it was for Dennis. Real good play by Waller Davis that time. Going to the hoop, found out he was picked up by two men, hit the open man for the stuff. 96 points up there by the Western Conference already. Away from Rudy, runs it down. Control is very important in this game, and the East has been out of control. Tom Donovan Rudy John 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 in his range. They need more plays like that. Well, Rudy T., the former Wolverine, 
We're up 20 miles from here. Put it in. And the big man. Necked up by Moses. Here's Julius. Irving spins free, and it's Dandridge again. And David Thompson on the foul. If they play more defense like that, they're going to come up with a lot more steals and be able to get to a situation where they can close the lead. Here we have Julius. It's a four-on-one. Going to the hoop. Didn't get the lay-in. On the line for two shots. Campy Russell returns. to Campy Russell returns, and Durbin leaves. Campy, of course. From the Cleveland Cavaliers, possesses his fine a fadeaway jump shot, as you ever want to see. Like Rudy T. from Wolverine. All the East wants to do is get within 10 at the top of the fourth period. They got a shot at this basketball game. They're 16 down now, four minutes left. Dandridge, they need all of his. It's 81. So whittling away here in the third period. And Steve, you pointed out, I think the key element strategically, they went to the big guards. They've gone in with the big guy. They've got Russell now playing guard. They're a little bit out of position, and the West could take advantage of them because they run their set pattern so well. Guinness and Kareem didn't expect it, but now he's got it. Boy, he thought it was a hot potato. It's a save. It's a good thing he had those goggles on. <laughs> Rudy T is off of the rebound. Now, here's the doctor who has taken charge of this Eastern Conference team. Tom Janovich rolls in the hook shot. So it's 96-84, and the Eastern Conference has come to life. Maurice Lucas will check back in for Lenny Wilkins. David Thompson, and East falling back there on defense, trying to stop the penetration. Thompson with four seconds is off. Good rebound by Danridge. Lead now to the doctor. Here's the doctor. and there's the 10 points Steve Jones was telling you about. 2.59 to go in the third. McGinnis is open back to 12. Sloppy on defense. Didn't seal up the middle. Dick Mata now will bring him over. Big smile on Bernie Bickerstaff's face over there. Those two. Here's Dandridge now. Giving it up to Irving. Mata's East is at 55% in the third. They are now 12 of 22. And Julius comes up to the free throw line. You know, one thing oh, we've got to get Hunter and Hundley to find one That's athlete in this All-Star game who will say, hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is running so much in favor of mothers on behalf. Why is that about athletes? It's always, hi, Mom, Steve. Well, I don't know. I, maybe if we had a lot more women involved, they would say, hi, Dad. Maybe it's just <laughs> they like to go to the other gender. We see Julius serving game high score, 22 points. He's picked a lot of them up playing at that guard position. He may ask for a new slot at Philadelphia. I also think he's brought some leadership to the floor here in this period. He definitely has. He has that quality, and I'm sure that the other players look up to him, and he's playing as hard now as he's ever played because this is his type of game. Maurice Lucas. Ranked off by Malone. It's 98 to 88, and the East can come back now to within eight. Rudy Tomjanovich has hit two quick ones during the comeback. Shot nicely timed by Rudy T. Now it's Walter Davis of Phoenix, and we've got ourselves one brewing here in Pontiac. Momentum and defense is key to for the East. They have gotten down and deep and made the West take tougher shots. They leave Lucas alone. They gave him that shot. And Maurice O'Brien. Now East can make it six. Here's Bobby D to the glass. It is a Five field goals and two free throws this quarter. And 23-point total is the hot hand overall in this game. 139. Dennis Johnson to Artis Gilmore of Chicago. Walter Davis. 100 to 92. And Mata is in the game. He's yelling at Bennett. You can always, it's the first time I've seen an NBA All-Star coach up yelling at a referee in years. You can always get in the game when you get close to a referee. We didn't see him in the first half. <laughs> I wonder if he brought the fat lady with him. <laughs> Mata's going to his favorite player, the only one he could look right in the eyes. Here comes Calvin Dr. Murphy. The, line three, two. the East at this point doesn't have a true guard in the game. They're going to get Calvin in here for a little speed. They've been breaking well. Maybe he can help in that department. 
Uh, one thing for sure, Julius Irving has been able to use his mobility out in front, get to the hoop, get to the free throw line. They're giving David Thompson a race. He has played real hard, done a lot of jumping, a lot of running early. He may be a little tired. Irving is beginning to take advantage of his size. Okay, Steve on the floor right now for Mata. Of course, Irving's at the free throw line. We've got Moses this below. Is the and Rudy Tomjanovich. And we've got Bobby Dandridge out there. And we also have Campy Russell. Now for the West, we've got Walter Davis. We've got Dennis Johnson, Maurice Lucas, Artis Gilmore, and Otis Birdson. Well, John, notice that they took a lot of the showmen out of the basketball game, and that's why the East have gotten back in it. But anytime you get back to the basics, you're a lot, a lot, lot better off. Why not? It's a working man's town, and Mata went to the guys who prefer the lunch pails to the Rolls Royces. Lucas is left alone that time. Now you can leave him alone outside, but never there. <laughs> Here is Sandwich. Julia Serving, who has sparked this comeback. Here's Rudy T. It's 102 to 96. We're inside of a minute third period. Well, you can make a strong case for Julia Serving. He's bringing him right back for that MVP. He's doing it all and got the people very excited. Every time the East gets a rebound, Julius is calling for it. He wants it. As the ball went into Artis Gilmore, there was a foul underneath, and I believe the doctor, yes he is, he's over on the bench taking a rest right now, and uh, well he deserves it as he sparked the comeback. I really felt that time that Moses Malone may have gambled too much, jumping far out, leaving Gilmore open, so someone had to jump in and they fouled Artis. And here's the leader of the Chicago Bulls, the man who's carried that team this year, that is for sure. This period that one of four by Rudy T. The doctor had 14 points, and Bobby Dandridge has added six for the East. It's amazing that Artis Gilmore has never missed a basketball game in the college or pro career. Isn't that unbelievable, John? All right, here's Otis Birdsong of Kansas City to the middle. Bad pass. Way in front of Maurice Lucas. Now, 16 seconds, third period. It's 104 96. East now can bring it on up for the last shot. Campy Russell. Score it. Get in front of him. Catch it in front of you. Put some pressure on. Artis Gilmore on that last shot probably shouldn't have attempted to block it because I don't think it would have gone in anyhow. Lucas throws it up. Third period, one in which the Eastern Conference decided to come back and give us a basketball game. Twelve minutes to go. 104-98, the West. In by six, hit 59%, outscoring the West 40 to 24 in the third period. Here's Campy Russell trying to make it a four-point game. Camp, loose ball. Dandridge will give the East a second chance. Campy Russell off again. Out by Lucas now to Dennis Johnson. Gives it to Walter Davis flying down the wing. Davis goes back to DJ. Seal up by Russell and here's Gilmore comes inside Otis Birdsong and there was a foul. A good off the ball cut that time by Birdsong going to the hoop. Artis Gilmore with his head up was able to pick him up. Potential two point play here. They have run their set stuff much better. That's where they have their success. I'm certain that Lenny Wilkins during that time out told him, fellas, if we don't have a good opportunity, let's set up and exploit them defensively. Steve, earlier the commissioner mentioned that the league is going to expand into two cities, and the two leading towns at this point are Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Dallas. Now others where there's interest are Miami, Toronto, and...